Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Run. Can somebody say run with me? Run! No, not run with me. Just run. (laughs) Good morning, Crossroads. My name is Marcus, and for those of you online, we just want to say thank you for coming out this weekend and worshiping with us. Hey, we're in a series entitled Run. We began in the uh, beginning of this year, Pastor Joel kicked off this series, and it's fantastic. So you want to go online and grab some of those things. This morning's notes should be on the app. So 77977, I think, is what you dial. You can get the app and download that. But uh, this morning, this is the last talk in this series. And the title of this morning's message is Run to the Roar. Run to the Roar. You know, it's the whole idea of... Anybody ever seen a lion roar? <clears throat> you guys perk up a little bit. You know, the female ladies are the ones that go out there and hunt. Did you know that? They're the ones that do all the dishes and all that stuff like that. They go out there and hunt and take care of all, not the dishes, what am I thinking about? (laughs) They go out and hunt for their prey. And one of the things that they do is they they go behind their prey. They go on the backside of the prey. And the guys are kind of, they just, they just are more chill. The male ones are more chill. They're lazy and they just sleep around. But when it comes time to hunt, they got to wake up and they go in front of their prey and their whole job is just to roar, just to get up, the main flares out and they just make this massive roar. And it's, uh, you're able to hear it like five miles away is what they say. And the roar of the lion uh, makes anyone that's around her, the automatic instinct is to run away from the roar. And, but what they don't know is that as they're running away from the roar, they're running right into a trap. And all the females and all those folks, they're ready to just take care of business there. And the same thing that happens in our lives, there are things that you and I tend to run away from that could actually make us better. And there are things like, you know, healthy habits, counseling, running away from your fears. Um, If we run towards some of those things, we could become stronger and more efficient in our walk with Christ, right? Dentist. It's a good thing to run to. I used to run away from dentists because they put a, they left a tool inside of my mouth when they were doing a root canal. I said, mom, it hurts. I would run away from the dentist's office. I'd run up a trees. I'd run back into the cars. And I never, they never knew why. I thought that I just had a fear of dentists. It's like, no, I had a fear of pain because <laughs> it hurts so much. And so later on, I found out there, but there's also some things that you need to run towards, right? We need to run to certain things. And usually the emphasis in Christianity and, and, you know, preachers throughout the country, they're always emphasizing on the things that we need to run away from. Flee the lust. Flee to stop doing this. Run away from that. Run away from that. And there's nothing wrong with that. The scripture is pretty clear about things we need to run away from. Like uh, Joseph, for instance, when sexual temptation came towards him, he, had, he ran away from that temptation. When it comes to, you know, that kind of stuff, you just got to get out of that place. Right? And... Uh, <clears throat> But there's also some things that we need to recognize that, hey, we need, to, we need to pay attention. And rather than allow the fear of that moment to make us turn this way, we got to go straight at it so that we can become better and stronger and face the facts, right? Yes. Today, I want to focus on what we need to run to. And so uh, a few years ago, Jeff and I, Jeff was here earlier. He's a friend, a great friend of mine. We went, uh, our wives and our, ourselves, we went to... Colorado to go ski. Well, I don't know how to ski, but we went up there to Colorado. And so we won a second or third day. I can't remember when it was. We wound up going about seven miles down the mountains. It was close, like 17 below zero. And so it's pretty cold. And we were eating at the restaurant, came out, and we came out and got into Jeff's truck and it wouldn't start. Well, we didn't know what was going on. So we called the nearest wrecker to come pick us up. Well, the, the only wrecker in that area was about, you know, um, he, 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 does the, he does an area about 200 miles radius. So only one guy came, so he charged us big time. So he goes, hey, can you just take us back to the hotel, and um, then we'll take care of the truck. We'll figure out what's going on. So sure, I'll do that. So he got the truck ready, but what, what we didn't know is that he only had room for two people. And so we had to decide, ladies, do y'all want to go, or do you want us to go? And so we decided to put the ladies in the car with this man, and they took off just six miles up the road. We assured them everything's going to be okay. But after they left, we we're thinking, like, who is this guy? He says, we don't even know who he is. Well, I don't know if we'll ever find our wives again. 
<laughs> and so anyways, so I'm thinking, and so Jeff's like, what are we going to do? I was like, well, let's just start walking, man. We we're hoping that somebody in the restaurant would recognize us and they would come and pick us up because we were two good looking guys. But that didn't happen. And so we just kept walking. It was like, man, it was seven miles up a hill, up the mountain, 17 below zero. And Jeff and I, we always get into crazy stuff. I don't know why it is, but it just happens. And so we're walking, all of a sudden we hear, woo, woo. Maybe not like that, but it was a dog. We thought, I thought it, was, it was a wolf dog. I looked down, and it's like a wolf dog was like, oh my God, because this, we're, gonna, we're done. The automatic instinct was to run away, right? We're running away. Start running. And I'm thinking, man, there's no way. We can't outrun this guy. He's going to eat us. And so I stopped, and I was reminded of what I used to do when I was a kid. When I was a kid, any kind of dogs, dobermans, whatever came my way, I would pick up a rock or act like I would pick up a rock, and I would go, ah! And it would stop in its tracks. Well, I did it, and it worked, even for the wolf dog. It was awesome. So I was like, ah! And he just stops in his tracks. I was like, I, I got you, boy. Come over here. And, you know, you can't mess with me. Anyways, I'm thinking, I'm afraid. So it just so happened that a car drives up. He goes, hey, I saw y'all at the restaurant. Y'all need a ride? He's like, yes, please get us in this car. So we went and wound up doing it. But here's my point. The point is this, uh, that the automatic, the, the, auto, the, the tendency is for us to go in the opposite direction. But what if you trained yourself to be counterintuitive of that, and then rather than running away from your fears, running away from the stuff, you run towards it to get stronger, to get better, to get healed, to become stronger in the Lord and the power of his might. If you're going to run to win, you're going to have to learn how to face the things that are trying to wreck you and take you back really into places that are not good for you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so what is that thing in your life? I don't know what it is in your life, but I know what are some of the things that are in my life. And we're always, you know, this whole thing that you and I are doing, this thing that's called a, um, a journey with Jesus, like we're, we're following, it's all, the Bible talks about it as being a race. It's a race that we need to run. And so that's what we've been looking at, this big idea. So all throughout this whole year, we're going to encourage you in your walk with Christ. So we began with Hebrews, the 12th chapter, just a real quick recap. And uh, it says, therefore, and we told you last week, and whenever you see the word therefore, you have to find out what it's there for. Hebrews 11 talks about all these heroes of faith. And so he says, these guys all had a race to run, and they all overcame. They had things that they had to contend with, struggles, inner critics, all kinds of stuff. And they had to contend, but some of them won, some of them made it. So he says, therefore, we also, since we're surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses, let us lay aside those things, the every weight and the sin that easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance, say endurance, endurance, the race that is set before us. That word endurance, it's a compound word. One of the words means under, and the other one word, word means to remain. Under whatever load, whatever weight, whatever is heavy, because you're, you're going to be under that, but regardless of how heavy it is, regardless of how, you know, how strong it is on you, you will remain and stay steadfast to the plan that God has initially called you to. That's what he's saying. He goes, Regard you're running this race, but you're going to have to run it. When you're going to run it, just understand there's going to be opposition. Stuff's going to happen. People are going to try to re uh, derail you. You're going to try to get out of bounds or just make disqualify you. But he says, regardless of how heavy the weight is, regardless of how heavy the pressure is, you need to remain strong and stay steadfast in your walk with Christ. And so you're going to have to learn how to run towards those things that you constantly used to run away from, or that you saw your mom or dad run away from. Does that make sense? And so this morning, we're going to take a look at this idea, because here's what happens. Whenever you have that type of tenacity on the inside, a determination, an irresolve that says, I'm not going anywhere in this marriage. If Natalie leaves me, I'm going to follow her. We're like chicle, for those of you who don't know. We, they used to call us chicle. And chicle is a gum in Spanish. It used to stick to anything. So there's Natalie. Oh, there was Marcus. There's, Natalie. there's Marcus. I was around there somewhere. There's Pastor Marcus. There's Natalie right there. She's with her binoculars. What are you doing? Who are you talking to? Anyways, um, I got off track here. 
so, so uh, we all struggle with this. Don't, don't act like, you know, you're holy or whatever. You've all run from the stuff that you should have been running to. You've all run, run away from stuff that you should have just been, man, okay, let's do this. It's time to do this. Does that make sense? We all have done that. So we're going to help you uh, understand how to overcome that. Sometime, at some point, you're going to have to face your fears. You know, David ran towards Goliath. He ran towards the very thing that Saul, the king, his brothers, and all those that were in the army ran away from. The voice of Goliath. Two voices in the valley. There's always two voices in the valley. That's not my message, but this is a great message. You have the voice of Goliath, the voice of your enemy, and then you've got the voice of God, the voice of the Spirit of God that you're in covenant with. And David heard and recognized the voice of God. And he leaned into that. And it didn't matter that, that Goliath was, was huge and massive and would destroy him physically in the natural. He knew that if he was in covenant with the Father, that um, all things are possible if you believe and trust. Amen? So David has a great example. As a matter of fact, next month, Pastor Joel, actually next week, actually, Pastor Joel is going to come. We're going to begin a series titled Running to the Battle. And Jeremiah's got another uh, little song that he's put together as well. So you don't want to miss it next week. But this morning, what I want to do is look at a, a character. I want to look at a mentor. Remember I told you last week, when you read the scriptures, you read it as if though the mentor is wanting to sit right there in your living room and give you a lesson, a life lesson. Remember that? Anybody been doing that this week? Yeah. One person. Great. It's good. I love my preaching. <laughs> so this morning, if Benaiah walked through these doors and walked down here and sat here and communicated some of the things that he learned when he was walking, man, he would share with you the things that God put inside of him that helped him overcome uh, those things that were opposing him. And he would say, listen, this is what you're going to face as a follower in your race. And uh, you're going to need to have a red flag. You're going to need to guard yourself in these three areas. And so we're going to take a look at it's just a, just a little paragraph in Scripture about this guy named Benaiah. And we're going to see, based upon what God did to him, it's the very thing that he wants to do to you and I. So we can become a warrior strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Doesn't mean opposition won't come, but you'll know what to do when it does come. Amen. One of the things that you won't do because you're a follower of Christ is that you're going to stand firm and strong. You're going to pursue the things that God has put you. You guys have dreams this year. Some of you guys had dreams of losing 40 pounds. And it's not even February, and you've gained two. And that's okay. I just want you to know, listen, it's, a, it's, a, it's not the speed of, 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 of light. It's the speed of a seed. Stay steady. Stay steady. Stay steady. Amen? Yes. And it's like, it's like it, I used to have this, um, I have a mantra. It says, it's not the, it, it's not the immediate. It's, it's the, the one that's steady. It's the constant that matters. It's the old turtle thing. You have plotters and you have plotters. Man, I'm just one of those guys when we travel and we trek with Joel up these mountains, I found out at first I was foolish. And I'm like, man, I'm going to get up to Machu Picchu. I'll be the first one up there. Of course, I was 30 pounds overweight and I got up there. The first day, I'm like dead last. I bribed one of the Peruvian guys 20 bucks because he is the one that had the oxygen tank. Like, dude, just stick with me right here. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But then I found out after you learn how to breathe and acclimate, you just take one step at a time. What do you call those steps, Joel? Rest. Rest. Rest step. Joel taught us rest step. Rest. Rest. Took me four days. I lost some toenails. <laughs> but I made it. And I have a story to tell. And you know what? That's the way our race is. It hurts. You might lose some stuff. But you make it. Amen. You make it, amen? amen? In the end, you have stories to tell that are worth telling. Amen. A lot of people want a, a pulpit to, to share, but they don't have anything to say. Wow. Well, you, as you're walking with the Lord and you're, you know, you're navigating through his areas that he wants to take you in, man, he's doing that for a reason. One, to help you understand that you have limitations and he doesn't. That's good. So you can learn how to walk by faith. You can trust him. The other thing that God just absolutely desires and loves is for you to take those moments and those memories that you had with him and empower your children with those. 
empower your grandchildren with those. I'm just learning that that's why I live. <laughs> it's like, man, I accumulate memories and experiences so that I can share with my kids, my grandkids, and my granddaughter about how good our God is. Amen. Sometimes you might not understand him, but when you don't understand, just trust, because he's faithful. Amen? Amen? So let's take a look at uh, Benaiah real quick. And in uh, Second Chronicles, I think is where it's at. We'll start right there. Uh, First Chronicles, I'm sorry, 11. It says, Benaiah was the son of Jehoiada, Jehoiada whatever that guy is, Jay, Mr. J, <laughs> the son of a valiant man from Kabziel. So this is dad. Dad's, dad's got a good track record, and grandpa's got a good track record as well. As a matter of fact, you got a good track record too. The DNA of your heavenly father, that he, the, the spirit that he put inside of the Christ, is the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is inside of you. You come from a good batch right there, don't you? Well, this guy did, so all of a sudden, here's the story. He kills two lion-like heroes of Moab. Two of them. He also chases down a, and kills a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. Like, who does that? And then he kills an Egyptian, a man of great height, five cubits tall. It's like seven feet, over seven feet tall. In the Egyptian's hand, there was a spear like a weaver's beam, and he runs down to him with a staff, a little club, and he wrestles the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and kills him with his own spear. Like, what the heck? That's aggressive, right? So that's his, that's his resume. And the next verse, it says that, and David appointed him over his guard. I love that because I would appoint him over my guard too. Top security guys, right here. Benaiah, stay here, right beside me, right? And so I've been, I've been reading this passage for forever, I mean, we have a book that we take our band of brothers to, but I had forgotten what a bigger picture and a, and a great lesson that God was giving us through this man's life. Benaiah, first of all, means built by God. So evidently God built him. God put something inside of him through those experiences. This is all that's written about him. God built and put something inside of him that helped him become a part of, of a commander-in-chief of Israel's army. It's amazing. It's amazing. And so some of the, if you want to be strong and, uh, and uh, have a strong family and lead well, um, you're going to have to probably overcome some of the same things that Benai had to overcome. So it's a picture of how uh, some of the things that we need to highlight and look at in our lives. And so I, I, I forgot that Moab means something. The Egyptian means something, and the lion means something. It represents something. So he goes out there and, first of all, kills the Moabites. And there's three enemies that you're always going to run into. Thanks, Bill. The Moabites, the Egyptians, and the roaring lions in your life. The Moabites represents the things of the flesh. Turn to your husband and pinch him and say, flesh. No, don't do that. I'm sorry. I'm going to get a fight in here. It's the things of this flesh. Now, the reason I say that is because um, in Moab, well, I don't know if you guys remember, but you remember when uh, you, have to, you have to think about the story of, of uh, Abraham and Lot, and they were down there in Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, after all that took place, they hid in a cave. Him and his two daughters hid in a cave. And they didn't know. They didn't trust. They didn't wait to trust God. But they hid in a cave. They didn't know how they were going to have children and, you know, continue their, their legacy. And so what they did, they conjured up a thing that says, you know what, we're going to get dad drunk and we are going to have intercourse with him. That way we can produce a child. And they did that. And that child's name is Moab. And so when you take a look at Moab, it's just a picture of the flesh of an uncontrolled life to lust. Boy, we're facing that a, a lot today in the 20th, you know, where we're living at today, right? You don't have to go to places to you know, to navigate your, through that stuff. It's right there on your phone. It's everywhere. It's on your TV, commercials everywhere. But one of the things that Moab uh, represents is the flesh, the appetites of the flesh. Pastor Joel talked about it. It's like these things that are immediate gratification. They pull you, and it's like, yeah, let's do that right now. Immediate gratification like, like a big red cake. It's awesome. <laughs> Waterburger with cheese, number one. Large fries, large coke. 
immediately. You can't drive by and see the orange and white. You're looking this way and you see the orange and white building. It's like, man, I gotta turn there. Something's drawing me. So the, fl- the flesh has a voice. The voice of the flesh is constantly yelling at us. And if uh, Benaiah walked in here, he's like, listen, you're going to have to overcome and destroy the appetites of your flesh. I don't know what that is. Could be addictions. Could be pornography. It could be spending a bunch of money shopping. It could be all kinds of stuff. The thing that pulls you has no eternal value whatsoever. Does that make sense? The second thing... And what the scripture says in Romans 8, as far as us followers of Christ, it says those who belong to Christ, he's empowered you. He's put the stuff inside of us to help us crucify our flesh and its desires. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that it's by the spirit that you put to death the deeds of this body. So if you, wanna, if you have flesh issues, and we all do, You need to learn how to starve your flesh. I think Pastor Joel, somebody said one of the best ways to do that is is fast. It's fast. Right? Don't don't go to the drive-thru fast. We're talking about fasting, like depriving yourself (laughs) of stuff. Fast. Put your flesh under. Tell your flesh what to do. I think it was Theodore Roosevelt, if I'm not mistaken. He used to smoke five packs a day. And then all of a sudden he stops. And they asked him, he goes, man, how did you quit smoking five packs a day? He says, I just gave my body an odor and told it to obey. You have grace to tell your body what to do. Amen? So don't you worry about those two pounds that you just gained. Just squeeze it and say, I love these two pounds. They're going away. The second thing that uh, Benaiah faced was uh, an Egyptian. Another thing. It says he kills an Egyptian, a man of great height. Seven feet something. <clears throat> um, and there was a spear. This guy had a spear like a beam. And he goes and runs towards him with this little club. He's aggressive towards this. When you think about the Egyptians, you need to think about slavery. Because that's when they were in captivity. When they were with Pharaoh. Um, and all that represents is the things that this world has enslaved you to. Some of us have been trapped in the world in the past. You know, I used to have a crazy addiction problem. And so if, if I'm not careful, those things will still haunt me. There, it's almost like they're dormant. And at any opportunity, they'll come up and rise up and, and try to take me back to those places. When the children of Israel left, you know, Pharaoh's um, slavery, one of the things that they complained about is, I want to go back to that place. And some of us have things that are enslaving us or drawing us back and are pulling us back. You've been free for 20 or 30 years. It's been good to you. And all of a sudden you had a little accident or something. They prescribed you some pain pills. And then the pain pills led to the addiction pattern. Next thing you know, you're in that place again. And Maybe it's something else, but sometimes we all know what those things are that some of us can't drink one glass of wine. As soon as you do, man, you got... D2020 and everything else at your house. Man, you guys know what that is. Wow, I'm surprised. I know y'all take communion with it, right? Okay. Boone's Farm or whatever all that stuff was. I forgot where I was at. So here, so the Egyptians are those things that try to draw you back to those appetites as well, the lust of the flesh. Proverbs 16 chapter says this way. It says, like a dog that returns to his vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. Isn't that crazy? In other words, the thing that made you very sick, when you think about that proverb, the very thing that made you sick is what you're running back to. Is you're repeating over and over again. And Egypt is a picture, that Egyptian is a picture of slaying those things. And as a matter of fact, when you think about the picture of Benaiah, he's aggressive with that stuff. He goes and he takes that spear away and he gets it and takes it away from that Egyptian and he kills him with it. And so what I call that, what Jesus calls that is radical amputation. I mean, there are some things he goes, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Now, he's not meaning doing that, but he's just saying, be radical about it. There's some things you got to go through, extreme measures and do that. You're messing around with stuff, watching stuff on TV or whatever. Sometimes radical amputation is just cut off the the cable TV. 
If you can't overcome it, if you can't, you can't, you know, if you don't have, if your weak is your will is weak, well, then just shut it off, amputate it. Get strong enough, get strength, and then there'll be a time when you can do that. It's just not right now, right? Are you out there? Come on. Quietness Presbyterian Church. <laughs> Radical amputation. Run, he takes, and he destroys it. And he's basically, if Benaiah was here, he says, listen, you've got to run, you've got to take that thing, you've got to kill it before it kills you. That's good. Right? Yes, <clears throat> this is a year for many of us, probably in 2020, it's the year of amputation. There's some stuff that you might just need to kill and destroy. There's some relationships that might... Toxic relationships that you just might have to destroy and kill, get out of your life. There might be some, some things that it's hard for you, but you know what? It's time for you to let those things go. Listen, some of us have been walking with Jesus 10, 15, 20 years. It's time for us to grow up, right? So when I'm admonishing you, I'm not shaming you. I'm just saying, for us, who's tired of living the same way over and over again, doing the same things, thinking that we're going to get different results? Who's tired of doing that? Man, God has empowered us. He's equipped us. He's given us everything that we need to succeed in life. And yet we're still laying around thinking that the Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl. Okay? Too soon. <laughs> Too soon. Yes, I agree. I don't know why it came out. It was the, it was the devil. <laughs> Last one. Yeah, but, but let me just camp on this for a second because I've got seven minutes. The things that make you hesitate... The things that make you feel weak, the things that make you pause, the things that make you shame, shameful about, stop doing those things. Kill those things. Destroy those things. And don't say you can't because God has equipped you and you can. That's why, listen, that, I recognize this in this body right here called Crossroads Church. I recognize that this year because the last two years have been just frustrating. We've been disconnected. We've been hiding behind masks. We'll come once or, you know, we'll listen to a 30-minute message, and, and that's all. We don't dive into, you know, the Word ourselves and, and, and glean from God's Spirit Himself. You know, we're being spoon-fed sometimes. And so, so we've grown weak. We've grown weary. Uh, and finally, people are starting to rise up and say, you know what? Regardless, I've got 99.9 .9 chance to live. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to, and so we, I recognize that. So I created CR, Celebrate Recovery, Thursday nights, habits, hangups, hurts. You have group. You have connection so that you can go out there and work through this stuff. We have on Wednesday nights called Reengage. It's an open concept now. It's not just for married. If you're divorced, if you're single, if you're about to say I do for the first time or the fourth time, it doesn't matter. We're here, that's why, because we need to connect with one another. I had a very, very awesome brother in Christ who just went through a very hard uh, divorce here a few, years, a few months ago. And uh, he's been, you know, just laying low. I was like, hey, come, come with me to, to Wednesday night. And so he came, and because the principles we're teaching are not for just marriage, but they're principles that it's for everyone. And so he sat down afterwards he took me out to the car. He says, man, I needed that. So I didn't realize how much I needed just to connect with people and just communicate. And so we have those things here ready for you. So you can't, you can't make an excuse and you can't, try and you can't keep trying to do the same thing over and over again. It hadn't worked last year or the year before. So even though there's a fear of coming and connecting with people, lean into that fear. Lean into those things that you know, are, you're afraid of. It's not, we're not going to sit here and write all your sins. No, it's about just connecting and helping us overcome and encouraging one another in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Joel took me on a trip a few years ago to Machu Picchu. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I just said yes because our favorite author was on, on that trip. 30, 40 pounds overweight. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Well, I didn't know that we were going to be rafting on rapid, four rapids. I didn't know that the, the rapids that we were in, a guy just got, died like two weeks before that. And I'm like, what, where's Joel taking me to? I might not come back see you, babe. So Natalie got insurance out for me and everything. She was set up. It was a sports writer's insurance. So we were, we were going to rapid. We are going to do rapids. And they took about 45 minutes. Some local guy took about 45 minutes to, um, um, what do you call it, to, to train us. 
because it's, you've got to have some training involved. And he goes, look, you're going to be going fast. I can't, I don't remember how they talk, but still, he goes, you're going to be seeing rocks. And the tendency is for you, whenever you see these big, massive boulders, to lean, lean away from the rock. He goes, but you've got to lean into the rock. If you lean away from the rock, everybody's leaning away. It's just going to flip you guys over, and there might be a chance you might die. It's like, whoa, what? So, man, when I was in that rafter, dude, I stuck my feet all the way under that plastic or that rubber stuff. Man, I had, there was like to my knees. That's where I was at. I was like, this thing, I'm not leaving this thing. <laughs> and we would go through those rapids and we, you know, we have these sticks, those oars, that's what they call it. It's like a stick. And it's like, how can these sticks control all this water? It's impossible. And so honestly, we were just floating around in the thing. But whenever we would hit or see a rock, our group, we would just like lean in. So we would hit the rock and bounce off. And then we just keep on going. This other guy is next to us. They actually hit the rock. They, they didn't lean in, but they went up on top of the rock. And they were there for about a few seconds, and they came back down. It's like, what the heck? And one of them tipped over. We actually had to rescue these guys. Anyways, the tendency is to lean away. So he's, here's what the Lord's telling. He goes, lean into those moments. Lean into those things that you're afraid of. And he'll, sh- he'll help, he'll shape you, he'll put stuff inside of you to help you overcome, navigate around that stuff, and you can keep on going. It's a life lesson that you'll learn, amen? So it's time for us in 2020 to just overcome, lean into those, 2022, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, babe. She's been doing really good this morning. Now, where was I at now? The third one is what? Roaring lion. Roaring lion. So Moab, all of a sudden, he overcomes the Egyptian, he overcomes the Moabite, Beniah, sorry. And then now he's going to chase this lion. So it says that he wakes up in the morning. I don't know why this guy's out there chasing lions. Who chases lions in the morning? And so all of a sudden we hear this story. It's like this guy, he comes in. We don't know if the lion, the scripture's not clear. We don't know if the lion ate somebody in his household or he's around the village and they're looking for him, or he's just out just walking around. But ever, nevertheless, all of a sudden, he locks eyes with the lion face to face. Well, I don't know about you. I ran away from a dog wolf. The last thing I want to do is I'm going to lock into a lion. I am not going out. The tendency is not to run towards him. It's to run away from him. But the, Benaiah, for whatever reason, he begins chasing this guy. You can't outrun a lion. He runs 30-something miles an hour. In one leap, he leaps over 30-something feet. But nevertheless, there's something inside of him that's like, man, this guy, he's going down. And so as he's running, the lion falls into a trap or into a pit, and he's there, so all of a sudden, he's gone. If I was Benaiah, I would not go back into that. I would be like, I'm done. I, I did my thing. Hero. Right? But no, he goes back. And it's a running start. So he goes in there and he dives into the pit with the lion on a snowy day. And he tangles, you know, he kills and destroys the lion. Who does that? Benaiah. People of faith do. Those who, who, who are not going to be backing down from the things that are, are scaring them. That's who does that. And so if Benaiah was walking into this place, he would say, listen, I know that's the craziest thing you've ever done, that, but I'm telling you, that's why you're in Seguin. There's a people that God wants to uh, minister to and love on, and it's going to take warriors like Benaiah to partner with us so that we can do the, you know, what we need to do and make it hard for people to go to hell in this city. Amen. So we can't do this with little Patty K. Kumbaya, pink-shirted, Christians. It's going to take warriors, strong men who are strong in the Lord, strong in purpose, strong with integrity, strong with their household, strong in their family, so we can do this together. Amen. Amen. And that's what he would say to you. He goes, stop playing games. You need to learn how to overcome your flesh. You're going to have to overcome the things that are trying to enslave you. And you're going to have to run towards your, your fears. The things that try to just rip you up. The anxiety. So here's my take home for you guys. What line in your life do you need to chase after? Think about that this week. Just take a picture of that. And put it on your, you know, there's this thing that I started, it's called shortcuts. Maybe you guys all know about this stuff. If you have an iPhone, get a shortcut. 
And every morning at 6, just remind yourself. It'll automate it. It'll come up on your screen. If you don't know how to do that, get with Pastor Jarrell. He'll show you. <laughs> just kidding. What lion do you, in your life do you need to chase after? What Moabite? What fleshly appetites? And listen, you don't have to go around searching for this. The Spirit of God will show you. Not to condemn you. Natalie always says something. goes, he always reveals to heal. Whenever things are highlighted and the Spirit of God does that, it's an invitation. It's an invitation. It's not a condemnation. People condemn you. People shame you. This, is, this place, listen friends, I tell you this all the time. This place is not a membership club for the right, righteous people. This place is a hospital for the hurting and for the broken. So you don't have to walk into this place feeling shame that you just messed up last night. Our prayer is that you, you might feel you know, condemned or, or, or convicted, but you come to a place that's going to accept you for who you are and try to point you to the person of Jesus so he can forgive you and wash you and cleanse you and get you back on your feet so that you can become stronger in those areas. Amen? And so what is it? What fleshly appetites? What Egyptians? What old habits? What, what, what fears and doubts and anxieties are you contending with? You don't have to pick 17 of them. Just pick one. And if you want to, if you're brave enough, you can ask your wife, what do you think I need to deal with the most? Don't call me after that. You call them, okay? Because she's going she's gonna to tell you. But come to Wednesday nights. That's what we want to help you do. And I'm telling you, God is good. And he has. You're one. Just true bravery. You know what true courage is? True bravery isn't feeling no fear. It's being afraid and yet still moving forward. And so is it difficult? Absolutely. But lean into that. Lean into that stuff. It's better for you. It's good for you. Don't rob yourself. I wrote this down. Don't rob yourself of the opportunity to stare down at something that tried to take you out. Do you get that? Don't rob yourself of the opportunity to stare down. This, the thing that you feared the most is trying to take you out of the race. The stuff that hurt you the most, the wounds of the past, all that stuff, it's trying to take you out of the race, to disqualify you. Well, if you buy into this, if you, if you allow Beniah as a mentor to speak to you and you embrace that, man, next thing you know, you're going to be so thankful. You get to stare at the thing to try to take you out and say, look, I'm an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. The greater one lives on the inside of me. You're not going to get the best of me. You might have won a couple rounds or so, but I'm winning this fight. Amen? That's how God wants to empower you and help you in Jesus' name. So, Father, we are so thankful for today. Thank you for God's word. Thank you for the illustration and the, 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 the lessons, Father God, of, of uh, Benaiah, Father God, and how he is helping us overcome the things of this flesh, the appetites of this flesh. You've empowered us, Father God, to overcome the things that uh, try to make us afraid and you help us over the things that try to the old habits and the old stuff that we were we're a new creature in Christ Jesus old things are passed away all things have become new and all this is done because of what your son did for us so we just trust you in all these things in Jesus name everyone that agreed with that said amen if you are ever in the Seguin area come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.